you know what, I'm tired of doing budget decks, I'm tired of playing memes, let's play a genuinely good deck, this Rapid Strike Urshifu one is no joke, probably one of the best decks in the format. Welcome back everyone to more from the Sable Eyes. I'm Mitch and today we're going to take a look at a Rapid Strike Urshifu deck that managed to come first in the top 16 tournament for the Brisbane Open, an Australian tournament series that I've been participating in and a tournament that I played in. So an incredible performance. This deck is really, really good. We'll jump across to PTCGO and check out the list. So here is the deck that was piloted by Anakin DLG to his victory in the Top 16 tournament. Obviously focused around Rapid Strike Urshifu with Gale Thrust, 1 energy, 30 damage, do 120 more. It's a really, really strong attack. Uh, and you'll notice that there's not a lot of other tag teams or GXs in here. There's one Jirachi GX, but that's because we are using Chinchino and the Make Do ability to try and draw our cards rather than using cards like the Dene or Crobat. And that means that you're a little less susceptible to cards like ADP. It means it's a little bit more difficult for some of those big decks to take their knockouts. Uh, the big thing that this deck does, uh, this style of deck does, as opposed to a more traditional Rapid Strike Urshifu list is it allows you to play thin counts of some cards so that you can fit in specific techs for matchups. For example, Phoebe is a card that you probably wouldn't see in a generic Rapid Strike Urshifu list, but because we can draw a lot of cards using our Chinchinos, we can find this one of Phoebe really quite easily. Similar for our Cheryl, we can find that quite nicely. And it just means that there's a little bit more flexibility in some of the cards that you play play. Uh, obviously, this deck is not a, like, it's not a perfect 60 cards. There's going to be some differences. For example, I would probably prefer to play an extra switch if I can, but here's the thing. It's the one that won, so it's got to be good. I'm going to take it out into the ladder, and hopefully we can get some good games with Rapid Strike Urshifu. Okay, we have a decent start. Um, a very good start there. Our opponent has just conce uh, considered the turn. Okay. Uh, they obviously don't have anything going for them. Let's poke a com and grab ourselves our Urshifu, because we definitely want that. And to be honest, we probably just attach the Air Balloon and then Bird Keeper into the Urshi here. Uh, that Mewtwo we could play down to get the Bird Keeper back, but to be honest, I'd almost prefer just Comet away. Um, oh, now I've clicked Com. I'm not sure if I want to do it anymore. Let's just get rid of it. Um, we will grab ourselves the Snorlax, and we'll we'll just use this to accelerate our hand instead. Uh, we've got access to uh, Bird Keepers in the deck. We've got Scoop Up Nets and Switches and all that kind of stuff, so it's relatively easy for us to try and get our attackers going, but it's going to be fine. That Snorlax in the active shouldn't have too many problems. All right, so we don't know quite what we're up against yet, um, and to be honest, it could be literally anything. A Jirachi and a uh, Mewtwo suggest to me that we're probably looking at a deck that plays Scoop Up Net, but that is a number of decks at the moment. Oh, Psychic Energy! There's a ton of stuff that's just gone into that discard pile there. We are playing Urshipult. Alright, so Dragapult VMAX. This is going to be incredibly tough, because this matchup is definitely not an easy one. Let's, um, let's evolve into Chinchino. And then we can definitely use the Make Do ability here and get rid of that Phoebe. If we find a Scoop Up Net, that would be great, but we don't. Um, we'll play down the Jirachi, because we definitely need to have that in play, to counteract these Dragapults, and then we will bench our Urshifu. I don't think there's a way that we can realistically expect to get into the active this turn, so we'll just use the Capture Energy to grab another Minchino, and then Gorman dies for another three cards. Uh, we have Boss's Orders for next turn, so we can... Uh, attack into a Dragapult V on the bench, but remember Dragapult V has a 30 resistance, a minus 30 resistance to fighting types, which is going to make this matchup quite difficult. We will probably uh, struggle at points in this particular matchup, uh, just because that Pokemon is so, so powerful. We do have the Jirachi GX though, which makes the game a little bit easier, but they can very easily counter that by utilizing something like a Mimikyu, which we've got in our hand, actually. Funnily enough, we try and use it to stop things like Mewtwo. Um, they can potentially use it to stop things like Jirachi GX, and because Dragapult VMAX has that 
uh, extra damage that it can place on the bench. We could very easily see our Jirachi turned off as early as this turn, which I don't like. But to be honest, if we have to do it, then we have to do it. Um, you know, it's it's not too big of a deal. Even if they do hit us for the full amount with the weakness, they're only going to be dealing 300. So we still have a chance to get value out of the Cheryl, which we have in our hand. And we can get multiple users out of it thanks to cards like Mewtwo. So hopefully it all works out. We look like we're probably going to lose this Snorlax this turn. And you know what? I can live with that. Depends though where they place their damage counters. I don't really want them to place it on the Chinchino or the Minchino, to be honest. Because those Pokemon are going to be very important in the mid to late game in this matchup. Hopefully they just stick it all onto, like... Oh, even putting it on the Rapid Strike, Urshifu is really bad as well. Because then we are in range of being knocked out by a one-shot. 130 is 260, though. Oh, it only does 130. It doesn't do 150. What am I talking about? 130 instead of 150. So they can only do 260. So it doesn't really matter if they put all five onto the VMAX here. We can still survive. Only just, but... This is going to be a tough game. I think our best play here is just to take three prizes this turn. Uh, they do put a lot of damage onto the um, Urshifu, which is fair enough. And 10 onto the Jirachi. So... They are going to be playing that Mimikyu. That seems very likely. Let's get our Chinchinos down. We can start using Make Do to increase our cards in hand. Grab ourselves a whole bunch of useful stuff. We don't really need that Mew. Disappointingly, Dragapult's effect is placing damage counters rather than doing damage. We're going to attach to the active. Then I'm going to boss out the Dedene. Just while it's still there, I want to make sure that our opponent doesn't have an opportunity to, uh, to remove it in any way. Plus, we get three prizes, and now we just need to attack a couple of times, maybe three times, into this Dragapult VMAX. And that should be enough. Like, we should be able to do it, um, especially considering the fact that their, their hand... Well, it's six cards. They might have the Mimikyu. They might have access to it. Um, we're, we're looking pretty good, though. They can't knock out the Urshifu this turn. They can't knock out the Jirachi this turn without a Zigzagoon scoop-up play. Um... And we've got the Cheryl in hand, so even if they do put a whole bunch of damage onto our Urshifu, like they turn off the Jirachi GX's ability and then they attack into the Urshifu, they will not knock us out and we can just remove all of that damage straight away. And preferably, I'd like to see uh, I'd like to see us access another uh, Urshifu VMAX as well, because I get the feeling that they're going to try and place some damage onto that V here now as well, so... We will see there's 300 damage onto the active Urshifu, and uh, they're placing some more here. 30 on the bench and 30 on the Jirachi, and that's fair enough. Um, I'm going to grab... I think I'm going to grab Giratina here. I don't want to really attack into this. I mean, we could grab the Mewtwo. It's kind of a tough choice. I, I don't really want to have to deal with that energy, though. That, that horror psychic energy is just going to make... All of the maths a little bit more difficult. Um, let's, uh, yeah, let's just make do first. Probably smarter. We'll get rid of the, uh, we'll get rid of the quick ball. We don't really need that. Um, and we can play the level ball and grab another card. Let's grab the Minchino. I think I don't think we really need another one of those. Let's make do. Hopefully we find a VMAX or a Pokecom so that we can get into our other V. Oh, it's disappointing. Okay, so that third damage is going to have to stay. On our friend Urshifu V. Um, is there anything else that we could realistically do? I don't think so. I think we just play the Cheryl and heal that Urshifu. We're going to play the Stone Fighting Energy onto the Urshifu V. Just to reduce the amount of damage that they're dealing to us. And uh, we'll get rid of that Horror Psychic Energy as well. We'll retreat. And then I'll scoop the Giratina up. Uh, with scoop up net we just leave that bench space open for us and we'll be able to deal 150 minus 30 is 120 damage which is pretty solid we've got 200 hp left to take so we're not going to be able to do this easily ladies and gentlemen this is going to be a a bit of a slog but on the plus side our opponent i oh, they're going to play the giratina as well fair enough uh, our opponent does have uh they they have to attack with the dragapult that's the only realistic attacker that they have. And we can potentially get the Cheryl back, right? If we find Mewtwo, 
we can potentially get the Cheryl back. Now, it looks like they're going to bring out the Jirachi here. No, they're going to bring out the Urshifu, okay? Okay. So they're taking two prizes there. I would have expected them to have taken the uh, the the Jirachi uh, in that case, but to be honest, it's probably a perfectly acceptable thing to do. Let's see what we can do. We can grab the Mewtwo if we want to, but to be honest, 10 HP is not that much. Um, it's a bit, but it's not that much. Let's switch into our Urshifu. We're definitely going to do that. How do we do it now, though? Let's just make do. Let's 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 do our trades first. We don't need to worry about it just yet. We can make decisions later. There's that Urshifu V, which we were worried about. Um, and a scoop up net's actually really good because this Chinchino has 40 damage on it. I do not want our opponent to be able to win the game next turn. So I'm thinking we're going to bird keeper. We're going to bird keeper into this Chinchino, um, and then I'm just going to scoop it up out of the active. Uh, because I don't want them to have access to that Chinchino to win the game. Uh, we will promote the Urshifu. We'll bench the Minchino. I'm going to play this Air Balloon down. Uh, and then... I think... I think we just Gale Thrust. Let's do that. Um, benching the Minchino is a bit of a risk here, because I could still potentially lose this turn if our opponent plays boss's orders onto the Jirachi, which it looks like they're doing, and then has two Zigzagoon pings, so a Zigzagoon and a Scoop Up Net. If they have that, then they win, but if they don't, we're in a really good spot to go the distance here. Uh, hopefully, they miss... If I don't bench the Minchino, then they can't win, but if I get reset stamped or Marnied, my hand becomes very, very difficult to salvage. So, it's kind of like a six of one, half dozen of the other kind of situation. In hindsight, probably don't bench the Minchino, because losing the game this turn is bad. Um, I would rather give myself a chance to draw out of it, to be honest. But that's okay, we're, 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 all, uh, we're all living the dream over here. Uh, they're going to scoop up the Mewtwo. Okay, so they had the net, but no Zigzagoon. And then they're going to put the Marnie on top. Do they have a way to draw into that Marnie? Can they Crobat? If they can't, we just switch into the VMAX and win the game. Looks like they can't do it, so we managed to get the victory. And that's a really tough matchup. This deck is actually really good. Alrighty, so into another game. A Zigzagoon and a Dark Deck box. Interesting. Uh, let's play the Capture Energy. Grab ourselves a Minchino here. Let's just double check. Do we have all the pieces we need? I think so. I'm just going to hold this hand here, I reckon. We don't realistically need to do too much more. So if they're playing a Dark Deck, this could be Eternatus. We may get to see a solid victory here. Uh, Crushing Hammer suggests that maybe, yes, Eternatus is on the cards. Very frustrating card, Crushing Hammer, but only one Capture Energy. Reset Stamp from 5 to 6 makes no sense. They're obviously looking to try and Crobat for as many cards as possible. And it looks like that is the case. So we probably are looking at Eternatus here. A Zigzagoon going into the discard pile. I'm thinking that I am correct. We'll see an E-Turn come out. And hopefully for them, they get to attach an Energy. If they don't attach an Energy, then this game is almost already won. And there's the, uh, there's the energy. And the research as well. Good grief. Uh, luckily for us, they removed one of their Crushing Hammers uh, as well. So only two more of those left. Two more 50-50 coin flips to have to deal with. All right. So Bird Keeper is incredible. Uh, that actually gives us a really oh, a much better hand than we already had. We had a guaranteed knockout this turn. But now we actually have a guaranteed knockout plus three extra cards, which I am a big fan of. So let's use Bird Keeper here. We will draw those three cards. Those three cards are pretty good. We'll grab the level ball. We'll grab ourselves a Chinchino. And I'm thinking that we make do... I reckon we probably discard the uh, the fighting energy, to be honest. We don't really need two right now. I value the other cards in our hand a little bit more. Uh, disappointing, to say the very least. Uh, but we can at least play down the Mewtwo and grab the Bird Keeper back. And that's going to guarantee us another attack next turn. We'll attach the air balloon too, and then we can Gale Thrust, take the knockout on the Zigzagoon, and we are on our way. Uh, the best thing about this matchup for a Rapid Strike Urshifu player is that it is very, very easy if you get a free knockout on the first turn, like we did. Because now we need to take two knockouts in the entire game. We can either take an Eternatus VMAX knockout, which we can actually almost get uh, in one hit if we manage to, uh, if we manage to get everything correct. 
Um, it's going to be a little bit tough though, because we will need like four scoop up nets, which I don't think is even possible anymore. Um, but it's pretty good because it means that we can just gust something like a crowbat for game. We don't need to deal with two Eternatuses, which is a big, big problem. Although to be fair, we can we can deal with two Eternatuses. That's not that that big of an issue really. Um, we do want to hold on to the Giratina though, because that weakness guard energy uh, coming down on the Eternatus side of the field will create some problems for us. A uh, weakness guard energy obviously means that you aren't affected by your weakness, and Eternatus is weak to fighting. So we've gone from a matchup where we have resistance against us into a matchup where we have weakness in our favor. Uh, so hopefully we can get the victory here. Um, interestingly, as well, just a fun little fact I don't know whether it's going to come up in this one or not, but. Uh, when we have our attack on the Eternatus, if we get, if we manage to hit them for weakness, it deals 300 damage, which is incredible, right? 300 damage is very, very good, especially because Chinchino uses Energy Assist for 40 damage. Is it another Crushing Hammer? Are they going to hit heads again? No, they're going to Tails. It. Fantastic. Oh, a fourth Crushing Hammer. Here we go. Heads now. Come on, heads. There you go. Have the energy, mate. Have the energy. Oh, boy. We are in a lot of trouble here. Um... We've obviously got the Bird Keeper we can make do and get rid of this Phoebe. We're not going to need that. Bit of a shame, really, because uh, I would have liked to have shown it off. Um, I think we don't need to Bird Keeper here. I think we just retreat into the Mewtwo. We can Bird Keeper back into the Urshifu. That's going to be our attacker. We managed to find another Urshifu, so we should have probably uh, Bird Keepered and switched. But that's okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, and we're going to Quick Ball and grab another Minchino, because that is going to be very valuable. We want to have as many of those drawing cards for us as possible. Then we pretty much just sit on this hand, I reckon. I reckon we can just sit on this. We can Gale Thrust and... I think that's pretty much all I want to do, yeah. Let's Gale Thrust and deal 300 damage, which is a very, very solid attack. So now, we are looking at a potential knockout with Chinchino next turn, which is incredible. If we can get that knockout... I will be very, very happy. And there's the weakness guard energy. So we were right to hold the Giratina. Goodbye, Giratina. You're being mined away just as I needed you, but that's okay. At least you're in the deck. At least you're here. Our opponent's only got 18 cards left. They've drawn through their deck very, very quickly. Uh, there goes the power plant. So not that that matters for us because we don't have any GXs in our deck. Uh, the, the good thing about this as well, just by the by, is that it's actually incredibly strong post-rotation as well. So if you pick it up now, you can actually use it. You've got a bit of longevity to it, um, which, interestingly enough, is going to be something that I'm going to uh, change about our rating system that I've done over the last couple of days. Um, I said cost. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to value because value is a more interesting metric, I think. Um, let's level ball. We're going to grab ourselves Chinchino. Uh, we are going to play that down, and then we are going to make do. Get rid of that Mimikyu. We're going to start trading these cards away. A Cheryl and a Boss, both very good cards here. Um, I'm thinking we make do away the Switch, to be honest. I don't think we need that. Maybe the Cheryl, actually. Let's get rid of that. Um, because, to be honest, that's not going to come up. Then we can attach to Chinchino, and look at this. Not only do we get to take the Knockout with Energy Assist, we can scoop up the Mewtwo as well and put, uh, put that... Uh, one of our supporters back on top. We just want the boss, really. We don't have a boss. Let's put Bird Keeper back on top. Uh, well, not only do we get to Energy Assist for 40, right, and take the knockout, which in itself is incredible, but we also get to accelerate a fighting energy from the discard pile to our Urshifu. Incredible. Unbelievable. So, we are set and ready to go. We've got all the cards that we need for a victory next turn. Now, if they knock us out, uh, we simply gust up a Crobat and go from there. But, if they do take a knockout and money our hand, we don't have access to boss, then we may need a bit of luck. But, on the plus side, a Turner still needs to take two prizes if they knock out this Genshino. And they have to, have to to hit the Urshifu VMAX. So, it's all good. This money doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, guys. Just relax, all right? Just relax. If I was actually being intelligent there, what I could have done is I could have make dude... Duh, make dude? Make dude away. <laughs> make dude away the boss uh, and then put it on top with the uh, Mewtwo and just guaranteed the game. But we don't play smart here. We play dumb. So, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Ooh, 
Ha. Let's make do. We're going to get rid of the Zigzagoon. I think we don't really need that. Let's hope we get a boss. We don't. Okay. Uh, we will quick ball away the Jirachi because we don't want that in our hand. We can play down the Giratina. That's a pretty good Pokemon to be playing at the moment. Uh, then we can... Uh, let's, let's scoop up the, uh, the Mewtwo here and put our Urshifu in the active. Uh, we will hold on to the Bird Keeper just because uh, we can, just because we can, really. Uh, but also just because then next turn we've got at least one switching option. Um, I will put the Cheryl on top just in case, and then we will Gale Thrust. Probably shouldn't have put the Cheryl on top, uh, but that's okay. We're just making a myriad of mistakes right at the end here, but we can afford to because this matchup is pretty much free. And there you go, there's the game. We managed to get the victory against Eternatus VMAX. So let's wrap this one up by giving this deck a grade. How good is this thing? Well, I'll tell you right now, playability-wise, this deck is an A. It can hang with even the best decks that it has bad matchups against. You can definitely win, and we saw that today up against Dragapult. And obviously, the fact that it won a relatively large Australian tournament is a big deal as well. How consistent does it work? Well, it works pretty much every time. Obviously, there are going to be games where sometimes it just doesn't work out, but Chinchino means that this deck has a lot of flexibility and it normally draws into the cards that you need. When it comes to value, that's a little bit of a hit for this one. It's a lot cheaper than a traditional Rapid Strike Urshifu deck, but it is definitely not cheap, uh, and that is because Rapid Strike Urshifu is a very expensive card right now. Outside of that, though, there's obviously those six cards are going to be quite a, uh, a dent to the wallet. The rest of the deck is really easy to pick up, which is why I've given it a B. Uh, if it was just a regular Rapid Strike ver uh, version with the Denes and Crobats and stuff, then it would obviously be lower. But since it does play the Chinchino, it is a lot easier to get. And how fun is it? Well, hey, listen, I, I like having fun. And this deck lets you play the game, and it plays the game really consistently. Overall, I'm giving this one an A-. It is a top-tier deck, and if you are willing to spend a little bit of extra money, then this is one that I would definitely recommend for you to pick up along the way. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for coming along and thank you to all the Sableyes who support the channel through their monetary contributions. If you want to become a member, there is a link down in the description as well as a join button. Click that. It costs three bucks. It's like less than a cup of coffee. It's fantastic. Are you sick of me saying that yet? Thank you, Dadbod and Azazel, for your ex extensive contributions. Uh, Fernando Yolo, Stephen, Agent Abel, Austin, Josiah Leaf Devourer, Robzy, uh, Caster PD, Brad Shings, Brad, Justin, and Croc Otaku. You guys are heroes, the Royal Sableye tier, as well as everyone else over here in white in the Mega Sableye tier, especially you, Andrew G. Welcome. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much, everyone, and I will catch you next time for more from the Sableyes. Bye.